In this video, I did like to cover the most powerful and exciting technique of network solution that is Kirchhoff's law. The, this scientist Kirchhoff who formulated two basic law for electricity that is KCL Kirchhoff's current law and second is Kirchhoff's voltage law. So this will be very useful for finding any branch current, any branch voltage, any branch resistance in a network. So I will start with Kirchhoff's current law. This is basic statement of Kirchhoff's law is given. Algebraic sum of all the current meeting at the junction point junction is always equal to zero. Suppose I have some plane where sum of the branch current meeting at one junction. Suppose junction point is O, current I1. Suppose this is current I1, which is flowing towards junction. This is current, suppose I2, which is flowing away from the junction. Another current which is flowing I3 flowing away from the junction and again we have fourth current I4 this is flowing toward the junction. So we have this is current flowing toward the junction. This is flowing away from the junction. This is flowing again away from the junction. This is flowing toward the junction. So this arrow mark gives the direction of the current inside the network. So this law applies to such network, such kind of, and we get the solution for branch current very easily. Now in this current, I will assume current I1 is flowing toward junction, it is positive. Always consider the current flowing toward junction, this is positive, while current flowing away from the junction must be taken as negative. This is flowing away, so I am taking negative. This is flowing toward junction, so I am taking it positive. So this is uh, application of Kirchhoff's current law. So algebraic sum of all current meeting at junction is always zero. So this is basic theoretical statement and mathematically algebraic sum I at junction point is equals to zero. This is mathematical statement of this Kirchhoff's current law. Al what is uh, this theoretical statement approach says algebraic sum of all current meeting at junction is always zero means here junction point there is no current because current coming and current leaving the junction so net current at this junction point remain zero ampere so this is numerical statement i at junction point is equal to zero now i'm solving this equation solving this uh, diagram and finding equals to zero current meeting at junction equals to zero so one important thing you have to remember current flowing toward junction consider it is positive current flowing away from the junction mark it always negative so here my i have red mark this two current flowing toward junction so it is positive and this two current flowing away from junction so it is taken or considered as negative so i am making equation as per the statement so i1 is positive second current is minus i2 third current again minus i3 and that four current is flowing away from two toward the junction so i4 is positive is equals to zero this is very important current flowing toward junction so i have taken positive this i2 flowing away from junction so taken negative i3 also flowing away from junction so taken negative while i4 is flowing toward junction is equals to zero this is my statement of kirchhoff's current law so this must be equals to zero means at this junction junction point the total current is equal to zero because this two current coming towards junction this current two current leaving the junction in this way net current at the junction point equals to zero so from this statement i am going to cover i am going to find incoming current is equal to outgoing current so this is statement number one statement number second i need incoming current these two are incoming current incoming current and these two are outgoing current outgoing current so i will separate this equation into incoming current and outgoing current i know i1 is flowing toward junction i4 is flowing toward junction so i1 plus i4 equals to i i2 plus i3 this is another statement so this is incoming current and this is my outgoing current i 
outgoing current. So what statement comes? Second statement, incoming current is equal to outgoing current. That incoming current, I1 plus I4, this is incoming current coming toward junction and this I2 and I3 leaving the junction so that my Kirchhoff's loss is the net current at the junction point is equal to zero. So making final statement, this is statement number one, statement number second, incoming current. must be equal to outgoing current this is very important that i found statement number one algebraic sum at junction point is equal to zero algebraic sum of current all current at is equal to zero so i got this equation then from this equation i have separated incoming current and then outgoing current so this part is incoming current i1 plus i4 that leaving uh, moving towards junction I2 and I3 moving away from junction. So I have taken this is outgoing current. So this statement is again I found incoming current always equals to outgoing current. Another suppose in a network, network given. This is one example. Suppose I have one battery. This is one resistance. Another resistance. Another battery. Now in such case, I have this is V1. This is V2. This is R1, R2, R3. This is junction point where more than two branches meet. We always consider this is junction point suppose O. I am considering this is current I1 flowing toward junction. This is I1 and suppose this is I2 flowing away from junction. So this current will be difference of this current and this current. So this current flowing to R2 will be I1 minus R2. So this current will be I1 minus R2. This is I1 minus I2. This current flowing to R2 branch. So I am applying this law again here. So incoming current I1 is incoming current. So I am taking it positive. I2 is leaving junction. Junction. So it is minus I2. And third this current also leaving junction. So minus in bracket I1 minus I2. So I1 minus I2. This is equals to it must come 0. Why? Because this is minus I2. So minus minus this become cancel. This become cancel. So net current at junction point is equal to 0. So I1 flowing toward junction. It is taken positive. I2 flowing away from junction. Taken negative. While I1 minus I2. This difference current flows here. I1 this. And this difference current flows through R2. I1 minus I2. So this current is flowing away. So it is negative. So net current at junction point is equal to 0. So current comes and current leaves the junction. So no current present. This is my Kirchhoff's current law. So this is very important for finding branch current in a network. Now we will learn Kirchhoff's voltage law. So simple we have diagram available. Statement also. This is mathematical statement given. Algebraic sum of all branch voltages means potential around any closed loop, closed path is always equal to 0. So we need a network to apply this theorem to this KVL Kirchhoff's law. So suppose we have this is battery voltage V. This is resistance R1, a resistance, another resistance R2, another resistance R3. Now this is one loop only. So simple one current will present in this loop. So I am considering, I am assuming this current would be I ampere flowing inside the network. As this is higher potential of the battery. This is lower potential. Direction of current will be this. So this is I ampere flowing. Now this is one loop, one complete loop. So this law, Kirchhoff voltage law can be applied very easily in the loop. So branch current, branch voltage can be easily calculatable. So I am applying, making mathematical statement such that this we will solve this network and we will find the solution of the current, unknown branch current, any unknown branch current as this is series circuit. So current would be same around R2, R3 and R3, all the resistances. So what is statement says, around a closed loop, all potential equals to 0, V is equals to 0. Around a closed loop means this loop there will be no voltage. Total voltage will be zero because this is battery source of energy and this battery voltage will distribute equally around R1, R2 and R3. So these voltages and these voltages become equal. So this, this loop contain zero voltage. So we will see how this voltage comes zero. Suppose such kind of network given. 
according to the battery polarity or clockwise sign convection we must apply first to solve the network suppose this is higher potential this is lower potential so resistance first terminal come positive second will come negative another resistance have same plus minus another resistance this is again positive this is negative this is very important sign convention is very important clockwise if you marking this simultaneously you go around the entire loop in clockwise fashion so plus minus plus minus plus minus minus plus okay now i am applying this kirchhoff's voltage loss statement around a closed loop all potential in a loop is equals to zero means we should get answer zero so some this resistance has voltage suppose this is voltage across the resistance will be product of current and value of this resistance r1 this resistance has voltage across product of current and value of the resistance r2 and this resistance i into r3 now this is voltage this is again voltage i2 i r2 this is voltage this is again voltage so this loop this algebraic sum of all potential inside loop must come zero so while i am going to tracing the loop plus to minus so this is become minus plus to minus so consider next symbol this is minus plus to minus consider this next symbol this is minus so noting equations by first voltage i am starting with this first resistance r1 so this voltage is minus i r1 minus i r1 second plus to minus going so consider this minus i r2 minus i r2 and then third plus to minus going minus i r3 now minus to plus going so plus v is equals to zero this is as per my theoretical statement numerical statement also we found so this is this is i minus i r1 minus i r2 minus i r3 this is we call potential drop because minus 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 and this is equal to potential rise because we going from moving from minus to plus so this is potential rise so this voltage v equals to in this case if i separate v that side what the answer comes minus i r1 again minus i r2 minus i r3 equal to this after shifting to zero side this become minus v again multiplying this minus here and remaining only here voltage so this become i r1 because minus minus this become plus this minus minus this again become plus so i r2 again minus this become plus i r3 this is equals to zero so this is voltage v equals to this entire term so writing equation v equals to i r1 plus i r2 plus i r3 so another statement we got that potential rise must be equal to potential drop okay so this is called potential drop this resistance this is called potential drop this is also called potential drop this is also called potential drop because minus polarity minus the minus symbol indicating potential drop minus sign indicating potential drop minus sign indicating potential drop this is called potential rise because when we moving from minus to plus it is positive so this v is potential rise rise this is equals to all our potential drop so sum of all potential drop potential drop so another statement we got that potential rise is equals to potential drop this potential rise equals to sum of all potential drop so in loop what happened no voltage because this is potential rise and this sum so in around closed loop there will be voltage sum v equals to zero so sum v around closed loop this is always equals to zero so from this un unknown branch current i this i ampere can be easily calculatable suppose i keep value of resistances suppose this is r1 is equals to 10 r2 equals to 20 and this r3 equal to 30 battery of 50 volt we have available so we can find the value of current very easily by applying kirchhoff's this voltage law so we learned here around a 
closed loop v equals to zero so we found these equations and then we come to know potential rise is equals to potential drop this v is potential rise potential rise and these are drop all i1 i r1 i r2 i r3 these are potential drop so potential rise making final statement this is statement number one and then another statement we found in case of kirchhoff's voltage law potential rise equals to potential drop in a closed loop now we have one numerical suppose r110 r220 r330 and the battery voltage is 50 volt so i'm finding love sign convection already marked so taking minus 10 into r1 minus 10 into i similarly across this resistance what is voltage current don't, don't known r2 is known so again minus plus to minus i'm going so make minus another symbol so this is 20 into i again third resistance minus 30 into i and then going this is direct battery so minus to plus it is plus 50 equals to zero now i we can easily solve this solution for current so solving this i am shifting 50 this side minus 10 i minus 20 i minus 30 i this is equals to minus 50 again multiplying this minus here this become 10 i plus minus minus this become plus 20 i this minus this become 30 i equals to only 50 so my current would be directly taking common so this i have space here available so taking i common i in bracket 10 plus 20 plus 30 is equals to 50 and then current i is equals to this 50 by sum of resistance 30 50 60 so finding current for this is equals to 50 divided by 60 it is 0 0.8 833 so in this way any network can be solved very easily we have multiple closed loops so that according to number of loop number of equations will be available single loop single equation will be available multiple loop multiple equations will be available